My name is John Rowley. I'm the founder and chief exercise officer here at 2020 Fit. We started 2020 Fit technically in an apartment in Chicago, and our address there was 2020 North Lincoln Park West. When we first moved to Kansas City, I had a full-time job. I was working for Accenture as an IT consultant. Coach in the morning from five to eight, work for Accenture from eight to five, coach from five to seven at night, and then get up and do it all over again. We rented our first commercial space. I kept my job for a year to prove that I was gonna be able to stick it out. But it was either, either you gotta quit your hobby, you know, and kick, kick these people out of your garage, or you have to go, go big with it. And fortunately, we chose to go, go the big direction. 10 years later, we finally figured out kind of what our, our pitch is with 2020, and that being our first address, and we want to make 2020 our client's second address. So it's kind of tied into what we've done, uh, what has happened organically, in that we've, wanted to make this a community, a home for people away from home, away from their office. Um, it, it might be there, you know, it's like Cheers, you know, a place where everybody knows your name. We want that to be um, 2020 fit. Yes, 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 yes. When we first signed our lease here, we had a five-year lease with a five-year right of renewal. And that's a 10-year business. So the way I look at it is, after 10 years, I have no control of what happens next. So we were th almost three years into our first lease, and I'm starting to think, think to myself, we signed this five-year right of renewal, then it's kind of over. So we basically, uh, not basically, we approached, and this is the best part, my wife is pregnant, she's like six months pregnant, we approached the landlord, writing him thank you notes, chasing him down, doing everything I can to just to get a meeting with the guy. And on his business card, it says, uh, community, philanthropy, entrepreneurship. And I was like, look, buddy, if you want to hit three boxes right now, you sell me this building. Okay. And oh, by the way, my wife's pregnant. We're trying to support a family here. So, so let us buy this building. So, um, it was, it was the ability to control our own destiny, uh, over the long term. and selfishly, I wanted to do this. So we're in a, we're in a brand new part of the building here. Uh, we wanted to add on, we wanted to continue to kind of dig deep on this community and then go add another one. Uh, we finished the renovation more than a renovation, expansion. We doubled, we doubled the square feet of the building. So we went from 7,000 to 15,000 square feet. Uh, finished construction, literally March 6th, had a big party the night of March 6th. Like we got our occupancy permit on March 6th, uh, have a big party. And then we were closed, we were closed down nine days later from, uh, you know, COVID lockdowns. And then again, again, did a lot more um, crossing our fingers. But when I say crossing our fingers, we're busting our bus to take care of the people that we have. The, the fact that people, you know, actually put their money where their mouth was and, and wanted to support us through that meant everything. And that was like the first time where I like viscerally felt, you know, what our community is and, and they have our back. And I, I think it's because we have their back. I don't know. Every piece of equipment that you see in here, we gave away. Every, every box, every barbell, every dumbbell, every bike, every rower, every kettlebell, we, we gave away to our clients. And we had, at first it was just like, come take whatever you want. And then it was like, hey, can you tell me what you took? Like, did you take a rower or was that a dumbbell? I'm not quite sure I wasn't paying attention. I just want to stay in business, like whatever it takes. So, so we emptied the whole facility. Uh, you know, we ran classes on, on, online, you know, through, through Zoom. And then we just stayed on top of people. Um, and then while they were all gone, we pa painted everything that you could paint in the building. So we have five different areas that we use. We have eight different classes that we run on a typical day. So our bread and butter is CrossFit. That's um, 65 to 70% of, of our classes. We have a fit class, which we, it's the easiest way to describe it is CrossFit without a barbell. So it's a 30, 30 minute class, warm up workout. There'll be smaller strength portions, but it's with a kettlebell and a dumbbell. Uh, we have a, a burn fit class, which is similar to what I just described, but in a, a hot studio. And it's, it's 45 minutes of go, 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 go. Uh, we have a hit fit class, which is a, a boxing and cardio class. Uh, we have swing fit, which is uh, uh, golf training specific. We have uh, kid fit, which is like our six to 10 year olds, which I'm smiling about because I, I run that and I have absolute blast with it. And we have athlete academy uh, for our teenage, uh, teenage athletes. Uh, it has been critical to not only our growth, but our retention that we have different styles of class. I want you to quit our class for another class. You get burned out on CrossFit, start doing burn two days a week, right? Ironic that you get burned out and you go do burn, but you, you quit CrossFit and do fit class. You, you're so sore you can't come to the gym, come in and do yoga. We, we want a, a fallback option or something for somebody to, to pursue. So a lot of people see CrossFit 
and then they get freaked out. So like, we don't have CrossFit in our name and we love CrossFit. We do CrossFit every single day. However, some people see it and they go, I can't do that. So we, we want to, uh, you know, remove as many barriers as we can. So somebody might come in and do fit because they think they're not doing CrossFit when at the end of the day, they're doing the exact same workout we're doing up here, just without a barbell. So, and then they see the people over there that aren't much better than what they're doing. Like, oh, maybe I can do CrossFit. So it's, it's allowed for people to quit one class for another rather than us having one offering. That's it. That's all you get to do. And if, if you don't like it, leave. So if you don't like this, go upstairs. If you don't like that, come down here. It's uh, so, and we, we see that being more and more a part of the model as, as we go forward. We've done a really good job keeping everything together the last 11 years with just energy, um, raw energy from everybody on the team, um, all motivated towards very similar goals. Um, and part of why we've brought push press in is to help us systematize our communication streams, um, you know, our communication with clients, our communication with coaches, so that we can scale this thing. And if we do that well, it, the copy and paste potential, um, you know, come, comes to fruition. So push press has allowed us to be a, more efficient with our billing. So, so we just, we save, save time on billing things run when they're supposed to, um, we are able to create more professional looking landing pages for ad hoc, whether it's uh, per personal training, um, you know, special events or, or smaller group classes. We're able to create, you know, the, the landing page that makes it look like we're legit. That, that honestly like pushed us forward very, very quickly. But then the, uh, you know, having access to grow, seeing that we can use that system to keep what is turning into a bigger gym and, and, and make it small is, uh, is really important for us as we look forward. We just, we really, we give a damn. And, um, you know, I think that's, that's kind of from the beginning because we kind of had to, you know, we didn't have like, uh, we didn't have resources. So like our only like, our only asset is like, we just care a lot and like, we'll do whatever it takes. Um, that hasn't changed is we, you know, we care about, you know, what, what people are going through. And we know that like this hour of the day is uh, a small piece. You know, it's a small, small piece. Like people are busy, they got work, they got kids, they got other stresses, they got all these things going on. But we have that, you know, one hour with them to make a huge, as huge of impact as we, as we possibly can. And, uh, and it means a lot to us and, and we care a lot about, uh, about the people that walk through our door and, and know that they have a lot of options. And, and we never take that hour we get with them for granted. You know, we, we want to systemize our care and, and push press is allowing us to, to, to scale, to scale that care, to keep our gym, no matter how big it gets or how many they, we have, we want to keep it feeling small and push press is our tool to do that.